is the SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living. And we're back downstairs in the indoor aquaponics garden here. And look at that kale plant. That thing is just looking awesome. I've never grown kale before, so. Um, but it seems to be doing really well in here. I got a bunch of kale plants. That's uh, just doing really good. So, kale is one thing that grows really well, obviously, with the, with the higher pH. So I've got some banana peppers that are... Hey, they're staying alive, but they're not really growing that well. And the lettuce is doing what it always does. And uh, this one's pretty much gone to seed. I'm going to take this out. But, um, I moved some things around, if you've been following along with the system here. And uh, trying to get some things a little bit easier to get to. The, the garden's been going along pretty well. Still haven't changed the uh, rock out yet. I'm waiting on a good solution for that. I haven't really spent too much time looking recently there's been a lot of outdoor gardening and things to catch up on so but uh, this episode today I wanted to talk a little bit more about how I've been kind of cloning some of these plants and pollinating things and what things I pollinated su successfully indoors um, and what things are a little harder to pollinate um, then I'll talk a little bit about that so but uh, just to kind of give you a real quick update on what's going on with the growth uh, I've moved the oregano into the back here, and this this is a grow bed that has all 6,500 Kelvin lights in it, so there's no flowering bulbs in here, so this is just all vegetative, leafy type stuff that'll grow on this side. Um, these two middle beds here, this one and this one, they both have some of the 2,700 Kelvin bulbs. You can see the yellower ones there that uh, induce flowering in the plants, and that's what we're going to talk about today is how I've been kind of um, pollinating some of these indoor plants. And so we've got a bell pepper growing in there, right there, and the tomatoes are looking kind of scraggly, but they're still doing their thing, and they've been growing up through the cracks here, and we've got the pea plant that grew up to the window there, that's going nuts, and I finally have some flowers on that we'll talk about too. And the celery that I planted in here has been doing really well, real green, looking good cilantro in here is doing well dill this is dill here so I gotta spread some of this stuff out it's just all too close in here I've got some on our chives in here and some white onions that are not doing that great but uh, tomato plants growing in the back and they've kind of just grown all up into here I gotta cut those out we'll be doing some cloning with those which we'll talk about as well and as always the uh, bean plant is producing beans all the time so it continues to uh, give us a few beans a week and about five maybe a few more every week so it's been doing pretty well also but the green pepper plants kind of my favorite right now it's been there's about seven or eight green peppers starting to form on this thing so it's pretty exciting um, so We'll go ahead and go through a few of the different pollinating uh, techniques that I've been using to get the indoor plants pollinated since we don't have wind and we don't have bees outside to take care of that for us. Um, we will uh, show you how I go about that. So we'll go ahead and step right into that now. You know, it's funny. As soon as I said that I don't have bees down here to help me pollinate, I actually stepped on <laughs> this bee and it stung me in the foot. And I have no idea how this gigantic bee got down here. Um, but yeah, so I got stung in the heel. I guess that's God's way of saying, you do have bees down here. I don't know. So anyway, we'll continue on with some pollination and I'll take care of this bee. Alright, so with green peppers, uh, basically what I've just been doing is I've got a, a paintbrush here, a little paintbrush I robbed from one of our kids easel sets and uh, it hasn't ever been used so just a clean paintbrush and basically all I'm going to do is on uh, the green pepper flowers there's these little things around the outside and then there's a little bulb kind of in the center and all that needs to happen is the pollen just needs to get onto that center part now this flower doesn't seem like they're spread out enough so it might not be ready I don't see any pollen falling off of there um, normally when you tap it you'll see some pollen a little powder will fall actually fall off of the, the flower but basically I just come in and I'll do that. You can also just kind of tap the, tap the branches a little bit or tap the whole plant and usually it'll um, you'll, you know, knock that pollen down. I've had the best success with actually touching, touching it with uh, the paintbrush and uh, just tapping it a little bit. And you can see the, the pollen will fall out and um, 
it'll be done, it'll be pollinated. So I'll show you what one looks like just after it's pollinated. All right, I tried to get in as close as I could here, um, but you can see on this flower, this one I just pollinated about two days ago, and hopefully you can see that um, the little green pepper starting to form in the center there. And then this flower will just fall off and you'll be ready to go. So it takes about two days after you kind of pollinate it for the little pepper to start showing up in the middle there. All right, and this one here is uh, one of the peppers that's been on for, I guess it's been about, I guess it's been about two weeks since this one was pollinated. So I think in the last video I had just, this one had just started. And so it's getting pretty big. The plant still seems to be growing slow. Um, the fruit kind of matures slowly. I can't remember, it's been a long time since I've had green pepper plants, how quickly these do mature. Maybe some of you guys who, who have these you could compare, but I don't know if it's going slower or at an average rate for uh, the plant maturity and everything. But the uh, uh, green peppers look pretty good. The plant's real healthy looking. So uh, if it's growing a little slower, I'm fine with that for now. But uh, that's what they look like. And of course, we'll keep up updating you on the progress and uh, see how big these, these can get. All right, so same thing with tomatoes. Um, I'll try to get the flower opened up here. But the center part of this flower, and this one isn't all the way opened up actually, so this isn't a great example. Um, but the center part of the flower will open up and you'll see the, the um, pollen will be in the center part right underneath this, right inside this little center, looks like a little banana. Uh, that'll open up and you'll be able to see the pollen in there. Again, with tomatoes, most people, you know, if you just come by and shake the plants, usually that's fine. Um, again, I've been using the brush and just kind of tap in there and uh, those, will, those will pollinate as well. Same, same type of thing as the green peppers. They are self-pollinating, but sometimes... Since we're inside, we don't have any wind or anything like that. You just need to give them a little bit of a little bit of help, and and they'll start forming tomatoes. So I'll show you what some tomatoes look like after uh, pollination. All right, so these tomatoes, uh, these have been again about two weeks, maybe a little bit longer since these pollinated. Um, again, the tomato plants prefer the lower pH, which I'm currently uh, haven't resolved yet. So uh, these are growing pretty slowly. Um, tomato plants haven't looked that great, and. Uh, but uh, they're growing along and they're pretty strong on there and everything that look like they're going to fall off. But just to give you an idea of how big they are, I guess, they're not very big. There's my finger. So, but they've been going along pretty well. There's a few other clusters in here. There's probably maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 tomatoes on this plant uh, so far. Okay, so with the bean plant, this is a bush bean. There are other varieties of green beans that uh, vine and things like that. I chose the bush beans just because vining in the aquaponic system is harder. Um, and this plant's been awesome. I mean, it produces, I don't know, maybe between five and eight green beans per week just on this plant. It slowed down a little bit since the first harvest, but it's still, still going strong. So um, this is what the beans look like. I don't have any flowers on this one currently that I can find. The plant is so thick. Um, I'm trying not to get in here and damage anything, but basically the little flowers will form right on these top pieces here, uh, right where the top of the bean meets the plant. And this thing did not need any pollination. I mean, I, it, the, the flowers are so small. Uh, I tapped the plant a few times, but all the flowers have pollinated without any help whatsoever on this bean plant. So these do not need any assistance with, with pollination. All right, so I don't have a real good close-up of this just because this is at the back of the system here, but... Um, this is the pea plant. It did finally flower, and there's a couple, but there's actually a bunch of flowers on it. Um, I have not seen yet whether this is going to need any assistance with pollination or not, and I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, but peas are another self-pollinating plant, and so I'm hoping with just a little tapping and, and, uh, and just with the normal movement of the system when I'm down here that that should pollinate on its own. But I'll let you know how that goes. All right, so one of the other things that I've been doing uh, with these tomato plants is cloning them and uh, this is the first time I've ever actually done this but uh, in this particular case in the aquaponic system here it works out awesome because for some reason if you pull the plant out of the aquaponic system the way that the roots develop in the aquaponic system they just don't take to dirt um, however if you cut and clone the tomato plant and let it grow new roots from the stem it actually seems to survive so that's what I've been doing uh, You'll see here that I've got these tomato plants that just keep growing up into the grow lights. I don't want to move this around yet. I just don't have everything uh, 
I don't have everything really set up where I can move this light up a lot higher because I want it low enough for some of the other plants in this particular grow bed. So I'm just chopping the tops of these tomato plants off for now. Um, and you'll see over here that I've got like this one here shot up alongside of the uh, light and it just kind of growing up straight here. And so what I can do is just cut the whole top of this uh, tomato plant off, this whole top piece, and go ahead and clone that. And that way I can actually, this will work out awesome for next year too for the garden. Um, if I have stuff growing year round down here, I'll be able to take clones of everything and get my garden started with, you know, foot tall plants. I'm also going to try cloning some green peppers and some of the other things that we have in here just to see how all that will work, like a bean or a green pepper or when the banana peppers get bigger, stuff like that. I'm going to see how well that works as well. But tomatoes are super easy because wherever you surround a stem of a tomato plant with moisture or dirt, it will start to root. So um, tomato plants are really easy. So I'll go ahead and go take you through the, the process of what I've been using to clone these. I'm not using any rooting gels or anything like that, just straight up uh, cutting and, and popping them in a pot. Um, and I'll show you here with this one uh, what we do to clone those. Okay, so I cut off the top of that uh, tomato plant and uh, I cut a good foot of it off, a little bit more probably. And it actually has some, uh, some flowers on it, flower cl cluster ready to go. Now some people when they're cloning these tomatoes, they say, you know, cut all the extra flowers, we don't want it flowering, all that stuff. That's fine, but uh, I, most of the ones that I've had that I've cloned that are flowering have done just fine. So um, I would recommend just keeping it, uh, keeping the flowers on there. But um, get a good, good chunk of stem here, and all I'm going to do is drill a hole in the middle of this, this bucket, or this little flower pot that the kids made. And stick that into a good, uh, I guess it's about four inches of soil. And just kind of get the soil packed down a little bit around the plant so that it's nice and firm. So you get the moisture in contact with that root real well. And then I just soak it down with some, aqua, some water out of the aquaponic system. So it's real fertilizer rich or nitrogen rich um, water. And I water it every day. So I just put a little bit of water, make sure that stays nice and, and moist. Um, if you do that, this plant it will wilt over, and you'll see it. It looks like it's you know it looks like it's going to die, and then slowly over a few days it'll start to stand up straight again, and then it's it's good to go. So just keep it wet, and uh, you should have pretty good luck. So, but that's pretty much the process for uh, cloning these tomatoes. This is a tomato plant that I have has been out here for about four days, and. It's looking pretty good. So this is one of the clones I stuck in a pot. Uh, stuck it in the pot for about a week, and everything rooted up pretty good. It started to perk back up, and I stuck it out here. So, and you can see it's got some flower clusters on it already, and those were there when I when I took it out. So this was just the top of another tomato plant I just cut off, and uh, I'll continue to do that here throughout the next couple weeks, and we'll get a bunch of uh, clones out here. So we've got some tomatoes that are already rooted and uh, uh, about. Eight inches tall. Just thought I would mention to you, I'm going to throw a list in the description of some plants that are self pollinating and some plants that are not self pollinating. Uh, if you actually, in fact, I think I still have a cucumber back here. Yeah, I have a cucumber back here which just keeps flowering and then the flowers just kind of shrivel up. Uh, that doesn't really grow very well because the pH is too high. However, that uh, cucumbers and squashes, pumpkins, zucchinis, all that stuff. Those are an example of plants that have a separate female flower and a separate male flower. Um, those have to be pollinated differently. You actually have to identify the male and female flowers and pollinate from one to the other. Now, of course, outside in the garden, bees go from one to the other all the time, all day long, and they accidentally hit a male and a female and pollinate your plants. Um, indoors, you don't have that luxury. So if you're going to grow those types of plants, which again, I'll put a list in the description of the plants that you need to um, pollinate that way. Uh, you'll have to know and, and be able to identify those. You can look up online and there'll be pictures of the flowers and it's not that hard to do, but um, just something to keep in mind when you're choosing what types of things to grow in your aquaponics system. The self-pollinators, tomatoes, green peppers, beans, peas, um, those are the, the common ones. Uh, those are all self-pollinating and very easy to pollinate. So, But hopefully this uh, was informational for you today. I appreciate you watching. Um, I will keep you updated on the progress. If you do subscribe to the channel, um, subscribing, basically what that does is just uh, you know, get you set up on the channel so that you get updates whenever new videos come out. And uh, that way, 
you want to follow along with the system and learn more about aquaponics and some of the things that I'm doing here with this particular system, I try to keep the videos informational so that you can learn something about setting up a system or uh, improve one that you have. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you find the videos informational that way. So, um, But anyway, I appreciate you watching today. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please throw them in the description or sorry, sorry, throw them in the comment section. I do monitor the channel regularly and I would love to answer any questions that you guys have. So, uh, Follow along, hit subscribe, like the video if you found it uh, informational or you like that in any way or if you just enjoyed uh, seeing me get stung by a bee. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.